students i welcome all of you in the another segment another session of transportation engineering as you all know that we have been discussing about highway geometric design we have been discussing the segment number 2 that is highway transportation we have learned various aspects of highway geometric design and in this segment we are going to cover one of the most important topics without having the proper knowledge of this topics you will not be able to get the thorough idea of what the geometric design is actually so let us learn these things we are discussing the segment number 2 what we are going to cover in this segment is we are going to cover the side distance what is the meaning of side distance what is the definition of side distance then what is ssd ssd stands for stopping side distance then the definition of stopping side distance various criteria which are related with the stopping side distance then we will try to understand the concept of stopping side distance with the help of sketch and figure we'll also learn various concepts of side distances with the help of sketches or figures we will learn the types of side distances we will have the learning of various factors that affect the stopping side distance and we will learn about the analysis of ssd let me let me brief you once again what are the topics that are going to be covered in this segment we are going to cover the detailed study of side distances what are the types of side distances stopping side distance definition concept its figure sketch various factors that may affect the stopping side distance and the analysis of stopping side distance so stay attentive and one small theory that is one of the most important as well as interesting things that we will learn is pieb theory let us begin the learning session let us discuss about side distance see focus on the word whenever you hear or whenever you read side distance what is the first thing that comes in your mind the first thing that comes in your mind is that maybe this particular phenomenon will discuss about certain side distances how we can visualize things how we are able to look the things whenever we are traveling on the road so more or less partially you are correct but in order to have the thorough explanation we need to have the conceptual knowledge let me tell you what is the definition see it is the actual distance that is the first thing it is the actual distance along the road surface whenever we are traveling because we are discussing about the highway geometric design so it is the actual distance this is the first thing along the road surface with which a driver from specified height above the carriage or about the road surface has the visibility of stationary or moving object means don't try to get uh, uh, thoroughly understood i will try to explain once again see let us assume that i am traveling on a road i am driving my own car i am going on this road stretch and while traveling i may observe that certain object or obstructions are there on the road surface when uh, in which direction i am traveling so it is obvious that i am traveling on the road surface in my car so my driving seat will have certain height above the road surface fine and while sitting on the car i must have certain visibility of the things that are present in front of me while i am driving so whenever i am driving at a specified height means at the, while sitting on the car above the carriage or above the road surface i must have the visibility of stationary or moving object which are lying above me when i am trying on the road surface so when i am able to see that okay there is some certain there is some obstruction 
in the road certain animals are crossing the road or certain uh, stationary objects are there so there should be some distance between me and that object and that distance is called as sight distance so it is the actual distance along the road surface which a driver from the specified height above the carriage way has the visibility of stationary or moving objects so this is called as sight distance so it look like it looks like this so whenever i am traveling on the road say i am sitting over here so this is the height of me above the road surface right this is the one of the objects which is placed over here so whenever i am traveling over this surface i should have the visibility by sitting over here of this particular object and this there should be some distance s from me to that object this line of sight this is line is called as line of sight through which i am able to see and this s is called as sight distance so this is the basic understanding of sight distance it is the length of the road it is the length of the road or the distance of the road which is visible ahead to the driver at any distance see whenever we are traveling on a cross road like this if we are traveling in this car we must have the visibility of this object or this object because if we are unable to view this object then there are chances of collision or accident <coughs> So there must be some side distance and this is called as this particular thing this this and this is called as side distance triangle fine let us learn about various types of side distance <clears throat> so there are three types of side distances ssd that stands for stopping side distance OSD that stands for overtaking side distance and SDI that stands for side distance at the intersection. We will learn all these types in detail but let us first understand the concept of stopping side distance. Okay. What we have learned till date is the side distance, that it is the length or that it is the actual distance which is, which is visible from a driver, sitting height to certain object. Now we will learn about the stopping side distance. This is the definition of stopping side distance. See, in side distance, see in side distance what we have observed or what we have learned is that it is the actual distance. But in case of stopping side distance, these are the words that you need to have proper understanding about. Stopping side distance, it is the minimum side distance. See, it is the minimum side distance. This is the first thing. It is the minimum side distance which is available on the highway at any spot which is having sufficient length to enable the driver to stop the vehicle traveling at the design speed safely without collision with any other obstructions. Let us read this statement again. It is the minimum side distance that is available on the highway at any spot that is having sufficient length to enable the driver to stop a vehicle traveling at the design speed safely without collision with any other obstruction means whenever i'm discussing about stopping side distance it means that if i'm the driver i should have the sufficient length whenever i'm driving so that whenever i apply the brakes whenever i see any obstruction and i apply the brakes there are no chances of collision of me with that obstruction so there should be sufficient distance available between driver and that obstruction whenever he applies the brakes and that particular thing is called as stopping side distance ssd see it is like this whenever i'm traveling in this particular car and if uh, if my car is traveling at the design speed and I observe that there is an obstruction in the road, 
there must be sufficient distance so that if i apply the brakes there are no chances of collision so this is the minimum distance between my car and the obstruction so that there are no chances of collision safety is there so it is called as stopping sight distance if we learn about irc criteria that we have learned total two things that the driver is sitting on the carriage way there is sufficient height of the driver and there is also sufficient height of the obstruct because without having sufficient height i will not be able to view the object so indian road congress has defined certain criteria that the height of drivers i above the road surface should be 1.2 meter means my eye should be 1.2 meter above the road surface and the object should be 0.15 meter above the road surface so these are called as indian road congress criteria for stopping sight distance let us discuss about factors affecting ssd there are various factors such as the my vehicle should be under control speed it should travel with the design speed so first is the speed of vehicle then comes the efficiency of brakes then comes the total reaction time of the driver then comes the frictional resistance between the road and the tire surface then comes the gradient of torque what is the kind of slope of road so this is all about the factors affecting ssd so what we have learned till date is minimum uh, distance so that there should be sufficient safe distance available between the driver and the obstruction what are the factors that affect the ssd speed of vehicle efficiency of brakes total reaction time frictional resistance and gradient of fine now if we discuss about analysis of ssd so there are two categories that we need to understand which are those two categories first is called as lag distance and another is called as braking distance let us learn these things see let us learn about lag distance a lag distance means see <clears throat> first of all focus over this figure i am traveling in this car while i reach at this point i observe that there is a dog which is standing over which is sitting over the road surface so it is the obstruction what i will do whenever i see that there is an obstruction immediately i cannot take any action it i will take some time to understand that what kind of obstruction is there what should i do so from the instance from the moment that i see the object to the moment that i take any decision of application of brakes certain distance will be covered this particular distance is called as lag distance or reaction distance and whenever i apply the brakes my vehicle i have, let us assume that i apply the brakes over this point my vehicle will, will not get stopped at this point actually it will whenever we apply the brakes our vehicle passes certain distance even after application of brakes and let us see assume that the distance is this and my car is stopped over here so there are no chances of collision so from the instance that i see an obstruction to the instance that my car is stopped total particular distance is called as stopping side distance this distance is called as lag distance which is from where the driver sees the danger to the he applies the brakes and when he applies the brakes to the moment where the car gets stopped is called as braking distance so this lag distance is called as the distance which is traveled by the vehicle during the total reaction time or total time taken through understanding and taking decision now what is this reaction time so reaction time means it is the time of the driver which is taken from instant that the object is visible first point first second is when i see the object what then what will do what i will do i will observe that okay there is an obstruction what should i do i should reduce my speed i should apply brakes and then i will apply the brakes immediately i cannot take any decision certain 2 to 2.53 seconds will be consumed by understanding the situation understanding the condition and taking the decision and this time is called as reaction time 
so total reaction time this total reaction time from viewing the object to taking the decision is divided into four parts it is called as PIEV theory E stands for perception time E stands for intellection time E stands for emotion time and V stands for volition time it looks like this what will happen first perception perception means it is the time required for the sensation first of all what I will do my eyes will view that okay there is an obstruction so eyes is called a sensory organ or my ears will hear the sound of that obstruction the sound of barking of the dog so my eyes and ears will send the, the signal to my mind through this stimulus so it is called as P so it is called as perception time it is the time it is required for the sensation received by the ears or eyes to be transmitted to the brain through the nervous system then my mind my mind what my mind will do my mind will uh, try to understand the situation it, this is the brain part it will understand the situation that is called as intellectual time then certain emotions will drive through my mind they may be anger there may be sadness, there may be nervousness, there may be fear. So, various time will be elapsed during the emotional sensation and disturbance, such as fear and anger. That will also cause in my mind itself, because emotions always take place in our mind. So, that is called as E, that stands for emotion time. And then, what I will do? Then, through spinal cord, my mind will send the signal to my whole body then what should I do what is the decision that I am uh, supposed to take so I will take the final action of application of brakes or reducing my speed or taking the, or overtaking the vehicle so that is the response time that is called as volition time so P stands for perception time I stands for interaction time E stands for emotion time and V stands for volition time and together it is called as PIEV theory so this is the part of language time See, first I will, uh, the, the object will be visible to me, I will visualize the object, then I will see, I will identify the hazard, I will decide what should I take, what decision should I take. So this time is called as lag distance or reaction time. Then I will apply the action and complete my action, that is called as breaking distance. So this is called as decision side distance model. So SSD is the summation of lag distance and breaking distance where the lag distance is equals to V into T, small v into T, small v stands for speed in the vehicle, speed of the vehicle in meter per second and T stands for reaction time. See if you are not given the value of T while calculating the example, you can take T as 2.5 because 2.5 is the IRC recommended criteria. And then comes the breaking distance, breaking distance equals to capital V square by 2GF where G stands for acceleration due to gravity whose value is 9.8 meter per second square and F stands for 0.4 to 0.35 it is the coefficient of friction. So together it is lag distance plus breaking distance so it will be like this Vt plus V square by 2GF. But what if my road is on the ascending slope or descending slope? So that is called as gradient. If my slope is on ascending gradient, it is like this. So what was the equation? It was this. Vt plus V square by 2gf. See, this was the basic equation. If my slope is in rising direction, it will be m by m. And this n is slope in percentage. If my slope is on descending uh, direction, it is in reduced direction, then it will be Vt plus V square by 2 Gf. It will be minus n by 100. So this is all about SSD. We have learnt about various criteria of SSD, PIB theory, concept, types of slide distance. SSD and SSD ascending and descending.
I hope you understood the concept thoroughly. Thank you so much.